Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're looking at a game from Anatoly Karpov with the white pieces and with the black pieces, uh, Mark Seitlin. Now this game took place in the Russian Championship in 1971 and I chose this game uh, to illustrate uh, the counterattack on the white center that often happens. Uh, my last video uh, I was talking about the Ponziani opening and how after, for instance, Knight of Three, Knight C6, Black, excuse me, White will play this move C3 with this idea of getting D4. And then I was explaining, of course, you know, the takeaway uh, of this move and that it blocks the natural square of the Knight, of course, and it also allows Black some uh, counterattacking possibilities in the center with D5 because now... Uh, Black doesn't have to worry about this capture because he can just simply capture safely with his queen without worrying about the subsequent attack here. Also, we talked about knight of six being possible. Again, all based on the uh, uh, insufficient protection of the e-pawn. And uh, this, my friends, is one of the arguments that... Uh, protagonists of d4 uh, used to uh, argue that d4 is superior to e4 uh, in the opening. Notice that when d4 is played at the beginning, the queen is already protecting the d4 pawn. So no matter what uh, white does, excuse me, what black does, the d pawn is protected at the beginning of the game. Now this might seem like a minor uh, detail. But nevertheless, uh, later on in the opening, uh, you can see that uh, it just gives white just one less thing uh, to worry about. Okay. So, e4, however, although black, uh, white is able to castle uh, quicker, get, you know, getting his kingside pieces out quicker, uh, the e-pawn is unprotected at this point, and there's many systems um revolving around this idea so you have your knight f6 alakon's defense right it's the most extreme example right just attacking the e-pawn uh, right away okay and black excuse me white has to and we're not we're not saying if this opening is uh, you know good or bad but we're just bringing making the point so no matter what white has to respond in some way right whether it's knight c3 whether it's D, uh, uh, excuse me, E5, whether it's, uh, D, you know, some people play D3, uh, it has to be acknowledged. Whereas, after D4, let's say Knight C6 attacking the pawn, well, White can just ignore that. White can play E4 if he wants, he can play D5, he can try to push the issue, Knight F3, whatever, he doesn't have to acknowledge this attack because the pawn is protected. So just food for thought going forward. So here Anatoly plays the move e4 here. This is what he played in his younger days. He was rated 2540 at the time. And uh Mark Seitlin plays e5. Knight f3, knight c6, so classical approach from Anatoly. Bishop b5. And already, we see this early attack on the e-pawn. This is known as the Schliemann, or uh, depending on parts of what part of the world you play chess in. Uh, it's also known as the Janish defense. The Janish defense, I think I said that right. So here you see this early attack on e4. If white is not energetic um, in his uh, defense here, uh, often black can uh, wind up solidifying his central uh, position, right? And um, the same same idea in the Latvian counter gambit with the early f5. If white doesn't adequately um, respect the attack in the center, uh, he can often end up in the worst position. This this position is too aggressive um, on black side for white to to really not you know um, you know not uh, counter attack properly. Usually you have to meet fire with fire. If your opponent is playing really aggressively. Sometimes you have to, you know, 
Uh, you can't afford to really rest on your laurels and play passively. So here, after F5, White has a few choices, right? He can exchange, okay? He can uh, protect his e pawn, and this is what I'm talking about. He can exchange the e pawn by playing, you know, uh, e takes f5. He can protect it by playing d3, or he could just ignore it, right, and just <laughs> play something else, you know, and uh, basically gambit the pawn. Okay, uh, here Anatoly chooses to move knight c3. Okay, so he protects his pawn. Right, because after e takes, excuse me, f takes e4, the pawn uh, can be captured with the knight. All right. So, however, this allows white to develop at the same time. So this is the most complicated move, but it is it is definitely probably the strongest move in that uh, you know it allows white to not only protect his investment but also. Um, you know, he develops a piece at the same time. The only downside is that it does encourage black to attack with pawns after the knight comes to the center. So once the knight is on e4, then the knight uh, can um, be vulnerable to the move d5. Um, the modern method is just basically a protection. All right, white just simply sit, uh, strengthens the center. So instead of playing knight c3, nowadays a lot of grandmasters just play d3. With the idea of uh, protecting the center. So if F takes E4. Then just simply D takes uh, E4. The the other option. Capturing. That kind of gives black what he wants. Black is going for, for, uh, for it at this point. So for instance. E takes F5. E4. Queen E2. Queen E7. And then of course. Um, black is looking forward to the opportunity. To be able to play D5. And recapture this pawn and stuff like that so this is probably the weakest out of the options uh, for white this e takes f5 so Karpov played knight c3 and now knight d4 uh, by Seitlin if f takes e4 here knight takes uh, e4 d5 uh, does not work here it looks good on paper but the problem is is this knight is compromised here so white simply plays knight takes uh, e5 here and then you have this issue with this um, knight being doubly attacked with the you know threat of after pawn takes bishop takes check in, in the rook and also you have this uh, idea on queen h5 because the king side of black is compromised okay so for instance d takes e4 Knight takes, and of course, b takes c6 is not good, so the best black has is probably queen g5 here. You know, attacking this bishop, queen e2, attacking this pawn, and protecting the bishop. And the game, the game tends to get a uh, very sharp, but at the knight f6, you can't play knight takes a7 check here. But if you want to go for more, play this move f4 and distract the queen. Knight takes a7 check. And of course, if c6, then knight takes c6. And you're going to get all the pawns here. So king d8. And you can see the position becomes wild. But tends to favor white here. Okay. So you can play. For example. Knight takes c8 here. Or you can go for d4. With this discovered attack on the queen. Check. G3. And this is just a sample uh, line. But black. Uh, gets in, into some trouble after a d5 here. So this is why. Knight d4 was played instead of f takes e4 here so knight d4 <clears throat> karpov played bishop a4 which is not the strongest move theoretically but karpov uh was very uh, pragmatic player and often just played uh good moves he didn't always try to find the best move in the position he would just play good moves 
and uh, rely on a lot of general principles, you know, for example, like keeping the two bishops and, and things of that nature. Okay, so now, basically what black is trying to do here is put pressure on this e-pawn so that white would be enticed to make this exchange. Knight takes e5, f takes e4, and Karpov just simply castles, okay? Bishop c5, now knight takes e4, and this is all based on the open files and diagonals. This, this file right here, the open e-file, and this diagonal right here, and the position of this bishop. This is why knight takes e4 works tactically. Knight takes e4, and now queen h5 check. And this is a common theme you have to uh, always keep in mind in these type of openings, whether it's the Dutch, uh, Latvian, any any opening where the f pawn is moved early. Yeah, okay, so that's like a general generalization. The king side becomes weak and there's often attacks um, on g on um, on the uh, h5 to e1 diagonal. Or, I'm sorry, e8 diagonal. Well, especially when the king is not castled and you have a knight on e5. Sometimes you have a bishop on d3. Um, so that when g6 is played, as in the game, you can just simply take. So if the queen h5 check, g6, knight takes g6, of course, knight f6. And notice that the bishop is hanging there on c5. Instead, Karpov plays queen e5 check. All right, so you might be like, hey, what's wrong? However, he's seen a little bit further in the position. And after bishop e7, he just simply takes the rook instead of grabbing the bishop on c5. So now b5. Queen takes d4. B takes a4. And... What I like about this game is just how simple Karpov's play has been and Black's position is totally in shambles. <laughs> uh, now this this uh, bishop is pinned, so queen takes um, f6 is threatened, king f8. Look at the simple moves, d3 is <laughs> just bringing the bishop out. Sorry about that, rook b8. Queen e5. The knight drops back. And now mate is uh, threatened. So king g7. Knight comes out and attacks the queen. Queen e8. Bishop h6. Knight takes h6. Queen takes h6. King takes. King. Uh, queen takes h7. Check. And black just. Uh, white just has too much firepower in the position. And and that is it. And uh, Seitlin resigned here. Um, there's no way to to stop the massive uh, loss of material. He would have to just start in inserting pieces, basically on the G file, whether it's Bishop G5 or a move like Queen G6 or Rook G6. You know, uh, engine. You know, engine moves when the engine uh, goes crazy. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that game. A very simple game from Karpov. Uh, I like looking at Anatoly Karpov games, especially in the 70s when he was like in his prime. And actually at this point, he hadn't really reached his prime yet. He didn't reach his prime until about 1975, 74, uh, 70, like 74, you know, 74 to like 80. That, that's his prime, like prime years, you know, about from like mid 70s to maybe early 80s. But, you know, about 74 to, you know. You know, give or take a few years, but 74 to 80, man, um, Karpov's chess was unbelievable. Just simple, as you saw in this game, right? He didn't try to refute the gambit or anything. It's like he just relied on these general generalizations, just basics in the position, you know? It's like he didn't do anything fancy. I mean... F5, a lot of people were panic here. He just played knight C3. He just made a development move, protected the piece. Kind of trusting that, hey, I'm not doing anything wrong in the position. So it should work out. Right? Kept the bishop here. Nothing, nothing, um, you know, spectacular. D3. 
then here he says, hey, he calculates, can I take the center point? Why not? And he just keeps developing. And again, his tactics were on point because, like I said, tactics are king. And then here he just destroys his opponent. And right here, I mean, the game is, you know, the black position is like just totally devastated. So, again, I hope you enjoyed that game. Please uh, like, subscribe, um, and comment below. I like reading the uh, the comments. Um, also, please support my channel uh, through the uh, donation in the bottom links. And also find uh, DVDs and or books uh, related to the opening that you see on the board today, which is... The Schliemann defense to the Roy Lopez, although it wasn't a good advertisement for it uh, today. Maybe I'll show a game where Black Black has his way in that defense. I guess we'll do do one of those next. But until then, I'll see you in the next video.